Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of artbysmitty.com. Today is going to be my first speed tutorial where I've already recorded myself uh, and I'm going to just simply speed up the recording by like two times and talk over what I'm doing. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about how to render out clouds in 3ds Max using particles. Um, so we're going to be using ZBrush to sculpt the simple shape, bring that into Max, and uh, create a particle effect texture of those particles and then talk a little bit about rendering and lighting uh, and how to apply that to a scene like say uh, we have a scene here and I want to add clouds to it that kind of fit the appeal um, this is kind of the results that I'm getting uh, from the tutorial you're about to watch now I've obviously gone in and made a few adjustments to like things like levels and, and hue and saturation so uh, but I've done very minimal uh, editing to this image um, so the result that we're going to get should help you get something similar or close to this. Uh, so I'm going to start the speed recording. Okay, so I've uh, opened up ZBrush and I start with a uh, box primitive, procedural primitive shape. And uh, I'm simply just using the snake hook brush and uh, holding shift to kind of smooth some of those areas out. Uh, the idea here is that I am kind of just trying to create the shape of a simple cumulus cloud. Uh, I would encourage you guys to pull up reference um, of clouds. And so I've I've actually had a, a different image on uh, one of my other monitors showing off the a bunch of cumulus clouds over uh, a nice green pasture. Uh, so I'm using that for reference as I'm creating this mesh. Uh, then I'm dynameshing it and smoothing it out so I can actually do a little bit of sculpting. Um, it's important that we have cracks and crevices and um, Basically, just uh, the faces of our norm, uh, the faces of our polygons are facing kind of in different directions, kind of like what you'd get with a, a cloud. That way, when we apply particles to those faces, they're all kind of slightly facing different uh, areas. You know, if you're if you're applying the effect in Max to just the sphere, it's going to look very generated and procedural. Uh, creating a custom blobby mesh like this is hopefully going to help us create a more interesting looking cloud render. Uh, really I'm just using, uh, I think for a little bit there I was using the blob brush, um, the inflate brush, the snake hook brush. Uh, I don't ever use the move brush, it's a personal preference. I just use snake hook. It allows me to make dras more drastic changes to, to what I'm doing. Now this part in ZBrush is not necessary. You guys could create a mesh like this uh, using the FFD modifier, uh, soft selection in say Max, but I'm just more comfortable working uh, in ZBrush. So shortly here we're going to bring this mesh, we're going to export it out uh, in the tool menu. Uh, we're going to export it out to uh, as an OBJ file to 3ds Max and import it. I really want to make sure that I have lots of bumpy areas in the bottom so that way when I add the particles I have lots of uh, lots of detail down there. My reference image I had a lot, there's a lot, usually a lot of shadows, a lot of contrast in the bottom of clouds and the top of the clouds are usually fairly fairly white. So here I am importing the mesh. By default it comes in pretty small so I'm just going to scale it to about the size of my grid. I'm using generic max units here. Um, and First, one of the first things I need to do is, uh, well, I'm just going to change the wireframe. You don't have to do that. Um, make sure I'm rendering in HD and using mental ray. And I'm going to find a position I like and hit Control C to create a camera from that view. You have to be in perspective view when you do this. So I'm just kind of zooming in on this. Um, hit Control C. There's my camera. Very good. Um, I'm going to say right click on my camera to show safe frames. That way I can see what's going to be rendered and just do a really quick test render to see what I'm getting and I usually save my test renders out. Um, that way in case an art director is coming around I can show them what I've been doing as opposed to uh, just picking my nose or something. Uh, here you need to right click on the mesh, go to object properties and uncheck renderable so the mesh itself doesn't actually uh, load in. Next up I'm going to create an empty flow uh, and then a birth effect and create a position object. I'm going to create a, oh, what's next? Shape facing, so that way all the particles face the camera. And a, um, I'm going to connect the two. And 
At the birth, I'm going to put the emit stop to zero, the amount up to something like a thousand, so I'll have a thousand particles. Um, position object right now, they're set to points. Uh, we're going to change that to be actually geometry in a second. Shape facing, I need to make sure I select the, that they're, these particles are always facing the camera. And orientation, random, so they're not all facing the same direction. Uh, in world space, set that to 20. And here I change it from ticks to geometry. And then I'll actually change the size of the geometry down to like 10, so they're not uh, super, super big. Uh, that way I'm still getting the uh, overall silhouette of the render. And here I'm just kind of showing off the image that I want to put the clouds into uh, with my Mr. Cube character here. I'm going to create a new texture here in Photoshop. 512 by 512, grab a soft brush, and I'm going to sh simply start painting um, the shape or the texture that I want to apply to each one of uh, those planes in the particle. You guys can use whatever program you want. The, the key here is that uh, you're painting in black and white. This is essentially going to be plugged into the opacity map inside of Max. So, yeah, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, some type of cloud shape. Uh, I'm not even sure if this is the proper shape that I should be making, but I figure it looks a little bit like clouds, so that'll work. I'm just trying to add a little bit of contrast. I'm trying to make this look as organic as possible. Again, guys, pull up your reference if you're not modeling or painting or uh, do, creating art with reference. Um, well, that's not a good thing in most cases. Not all the time, but most cases. So once you're done, I just save that out to my desktop as a something like a JPEG. You know, you guys could come in here with a liquify brush and move the shape around if you're not quite happy with it. Um, so once that's saved out to uh, my desktop, I'm going to save that out as clouds mask as a JPEG. Hit OK. Go back into Max. Hit M for my material editor. Create a new material. Make it white. And turn on the opacity and plug that bitmap in to the opacity map um, and I'm just going to double click on my uh, material so I can see what it's doing. Uh, there you go. Uh, and I'm going to simply plug that in as an instance into the material uh, slot in the particle generator and here's what you get which is uh, a decent result not quite what we want. Uh, from here I'm going to click on where it says bitmap change this to a uh, mask switch uh, the alpha to go in the mask and then in the map we're going to add a gradient ramp. Here I'm going to make the left picker white, delete the middle picker and create uh, make the right picker black. I'm also going to change the gradient type to radial. So if you right click on those pickers it allows us to change um, the color or delete them etc. And so now I've got uh, and actually here instead of putting black I'm going to add in a texture um, so I started out with black, but I'm going to go back and make sure I'm going to right click on it again. Um, come here to texture and go down to something like smoke. And on the smoke, I'm going, to, I'm going to pull up that so we can see what's changing the size. I'll change that to something like 10. Uh, increase the, uh, or decrease perhaps the exponent to be something like 1 uh, to make it a little bit more visible. And now that smoke is only going to be on the, the outside of the texture makes it look a little bit more uh, organic. Uh, next up I need to create, uh, you can see I've got my particles facing the camera, um, just double checking, I'm gonna go to create lights, target direct, and create a target light from coming from slightly from behind the cloud. I'm gonna come down to here to uh, turn shadows on, uh, actually no shadows yet, um, we're gonna go down to uh, decay, we're gonna use far attenuation, and I just wanna tweak the values so they're within the cloud. So the light will fade off as it reaches the end, right there. Uh, from here, I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, okay, under advanced effects, this is really important. I click ambient only, so we actually don't illuminate diffuse or specularity. Uh, next, I need to kind of you know position this light a little bit better, so it is actually um, the cloud is fitting within that light. Uh, and from here, you're, you guys are pretty much done. You just need to start tweaking your lights, uh, seeing what effects you get. I'm playing with the hot spot and the fall off fields, um, checking it from different angles, and eventually I'm just going to go to my 
camera and hit render. Um, once I get, once I come in here and, and actually render this out and see what it looks like, we get something like seen here. Uh, I wasn't completely happy with the level of details in the bottom there, so I actually uh, created a new skylight and placed that in my scene, and that gives me. Um, so I have a skylight and the target direct light, and by adding both of those, I get a lot more detail in the the render. That's it. Thanks for watching.